We are here on this special mountain, which is home to Gunya. Gunyam is the goddess of love and compassion. And you can see from the top of the mountain comes a trickle of water. which turns into a stream. The stream is rushing through the forest. We can feel the forest full of trees around us, their leaves rustling in the wind. Birds are flying, singing as they go. See how the water nurtures all the plants. nourishing the roots of the trees. See how the water falls down and into the little rock pool. This little rock pool is home to many animals. Living happily, taking care of each other. Crab, shrimp and snail. Spider and Dragonfly Algae, Moss and Ferns And then there is the Little Fish
the creatures' lives are full of joy. They love to play games. Gunyam comes down the mountain to see the little creatures play, drawn by their joy. One day, Turtle suggests they play the diving game. Let's all dive down and collect pebbles from the bottom of the pool, cries Turtle. But Frog has another idea. He wants to play hopscotch. Let's all hop from rock to rock and back, cries the Frog. But Shrimp has his own idea. He wants to play tag. Let me be it, let me be it, and I'll try to catch you, cries Shrimp. Every animal wants to play a different game. They will decide by paper, scissors, stone which game to play. One more time, one more time, one more time, please. Paper. Scissor stone. Poor frog always loses as he can only make paper. And because they still can't agree, they begin to argue. The arguing makes them all angry, so they begin to shout. But the shouting makes them argue even harder. And before anyone can stop them, they begin to fight.
fight and fight. When they are quite exhausted from fighting. They stop talking to each other. Gunyam is sad to see all the little creatures whom she loves so much become so angry. She cannot bear to She leaves them, returning to the mountain top. Even nature seems displeased. For the stream begins to slow into a trickle. Until finally, it stops flowing completely. Oh dear, thinks little fish. None of my friends are talking to each other and now the stream has almost dried up. Without water, we are done for. Sure enough, without the flow of fresh water, the water that remains in a rock pool is becoming polluted. The algae, moss and ferns and other plants are starting to wither and turn brown. Leaves are falling from the trees, flowers are drooping, losing their fragrance. And one by one, the little creatures are getting sick.
What can I do to help my friends? Thinks little fish. I must find out why the water is no longer flowing. I must go up to the mountain top. I've heard that the goddess of love and compassion will help anyone who prays to her. Little fish prepares himself to take a leap. Out of the rock pool and up the mountain. He leaps up with all his might, up the rock face. But he hits the rock and tumbles back into the pool. The days go by, and one day, after many failed attempts, he begins to feel that he will never make it. Surely there must be something I can do. If only I can see Gunyam. Meanwhile, Gunyam is watching from the mountain top. She sees little fish trying so hard. She begins to feel great compassion for him. So she makes a wish. In a moment of sheer desperation, Little Fish decides he will give it one last try. He gathers up all his strength and makes a giant leap. Up and up he goes, and look what happens, he's still going. Over the rock face he sails, up over the trees. And look, the little fish is changing.
His body begins to lengthen, and now he looks like a snake. His head begins to grow, and now he has whiskers and a mane like a lion. And from out of his body come claws, sharp and long. The little fish has become a dragon. What magic, what power he feels now. Now the dragon flies over the forest. And look, the dragon is breathing fire. Setting fire to many little plants and shrubs. All the animals of the forest are running away. Look at me now, look how big and strong I am. Then, he remembers his friends in the rock pool. looks up towards the mountain top and is more determined than ever to find Gun Yang. As he approaches the top of the mountain, the dragon hears a faint song. He begins to slow down and become quiet, so he can hear it better. It's the sweetest, most lovely song he has ever heard. Little fish, little fish. You used to be so sweet and gentle. Now you are so loud and fierce, frightening everybody. Don't you remember who you are?
as he listens, something begins to happen inside the dragon. Something strange, something wonderful. His body starts to tremble. His heart begins to melt. He is filled with a love he has never felt before. Tears fill his eyes, trickling down his cheeks and onto the earth. Then something else begins to happen. The dragon starts to shrink. His body is getting shorter and his head is shrinking. The dragon keeps moving. The tears keep falling. Arriving at the top of the mountain, he sees Gunyam standing there. He moves towards her and by the time he reaches her feet, He has become so small that he is the little fish again. The little fish lies at the feet of Gunyam, exhausted and content. He lets go of all that is left of his pride. He feels so much love now. He melts into Gunya, becoming part of her. All the tears that came from the eyes of the dragon pouring out onto the earth. The tears have formed a trickle of water which turns into a stream. Down through the forest, falling and falling, and into the little rock pool. All the little creatures are filled with relief to see the water returning.
the fresh water begins to heal their sickness. And bring back the happiness they used to know. Now Gunyam comes back down the mountain, drawn by their joy. And this time, instead of hiding, Gunyam joins all the little creatures in their play. The animals promise they will never fight again. They promise always to take care of each other. But they can't help wondering, where is the little fish? Little fish is living deep inside Gunyam's heart, looking out through her 